1898, it's a long time ago, the Spanish-American War was started by newspapers crying, remember the Maine. Well, the Maine was an American ship that exploded in Havana Harbor. And the newspapers quickly, particularly the New York World, started pushing articles saying, we need to have a war with Spain over this. Remember the Maine, they blew it up. That was utterly fake news. It wasn't true, and it led to a war. So, fake news is not a new thing. The First Amendment does not allow the government to regulate what companies or people, social media sites or newspapers or television stations, doesn't give them the authority to tell them what to say. The Communications Decency Act, which was passed in 1996, pretty much insulates these companies from civil lawsuits for either their attempt to moderate or their decision not to moderate. Under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, there's absolutely no obligation to moderate so-called fake news. The exceptions to the Communications Decency Act basically refer to things that would be violations of federal criminal law or things that would be involved in some way with sex trafficking. There is no legal obligation for social media platforms to moderate anything other than things which would be criminal. But the kind of things that have been discussed in the hearings about Facebook and in the hearings where Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg was testifying to deal with things like so-called fake news. As for that, there is no law that requires them to do that, number one. And number two, despite the pressure from the senators, under the First Amendment, no such law could possibly be constitutional. This is none of those things. As the law stands, they're completely uh, immune from liability for uh, either trying to edit out or not trying to edit out things which might be deemed as, as fake news. More fundamentally, the First Amendment provides very strong protection against any kind of legislative intent to require social media sites to edit uh, and censor so-called fake news. For one thing, the news that they're talking about is basically what's known as political speech. And the Supreme Court has said for years that the most important type of speech that the First Amendment protects is political speech. And the reason for that is very fundamental. Uh, and it goes all the way back to 1798 when Congress passed a law called the Sedition Act that made it a crime to criticize the President of the Government of the United States. And Madison wrote a very fundamental paper where he basically said you cannot have popular government elections if you can't have discussion of issues and parties and personalities that run in those elections. Like any other kind of media, the government cannot dictate uh, what it calls news, and particularly on matters of public interest that would be politics, whether they think it's fake or not fake. The First Amendment is broad, broad protection, maybe broader in this country, than anywhere else in the world. But there really are no extra protections that the press has over other forms of expression. Intuitively, people might think that the press has a higher standard of truthfulness, but in reality, they don't. Pretty much, just as the press doesn't get any extra leeway that the rest of us don't have, it also doesn't have any extra obligations that we don't have. If I defame you and it's not true, I could be liable just as the press could be. No more, no less.